Hello everyone, welcome back to this functional systems learning to manage chaos. Let's go ahead and continue. What can I get you? Two beers. Any brand you like. Coming right up. When it departs, I find myself curious about two things. Firstly, I had to drink two beers? No, when it's for me. Why would you want to drink one? I'm one of the people who enjoy losing a bit of control over themselves. I would not have pegged them in the sort. At any rate, the second thing... What's a brand, sir? Does it have something to do with fire and iron? Uh... Pardon? Well... We used to brand cattle and other animals with a symbol that would associate them with their farmer, right? That is, if I remember my history. I was with fire and iron, so this is something similar. I'm not saying something stupid, am I? Is it how the alcohol is made, perhaps? Are the ingredients burned in some way before they're officially beer? Maybe with some sort of spiritual symbol? They do call them spirits after all. They must be a reason for that, right? Why isn't he saying anything? Or it has something to do with real spirits? Like some sort of rite where each batch is brewed in honor of someone who's died. I mean, I've read these places can be very strange and... Uh, am I close? Oh, Winter, you... You innocent little thing. Oh, please let me be close. Mm, no. No. You're not close. Crap, I should have shut up way earlier. Why'd I ramble like that? Now I look like like the fool. Honestly though, I'm a little disappointed. Some fantasy would be nice. Winter, we're starting to think you've already gotten yourself drunk out of the atmosphere. Oh, please. There you go. The waiter has returned, bearing two tall and thick tankards foaming at the brim. Beer, right? And no more vodka and wines. One is placed in front of Cyrus and the other in front of me. Enjoy. He leaves. I peek over to my cup's lip and peer into its mouth. The beverage does not take kindly to my curiosity, bubbling and spitting at me. Ugh. What draw with the start? How intimidating. Sir. Don't be such a baby. It won't kill you. There'll be much worse things you'll have to swallow than alcohol. Trust me. Sounds as though Cyrus is perfectly fine with bending over. Should the situation demand it. Ingesting things like this? Ingesting things worse than this? Allow me to apologize, Cyrus, but I am not a wimp. I know where to draw the line. It is quite the opposite of weakness, really. It's strength. No one is going to be forcing me to do anything I don't agree to. That said, I did say I would drink some of this. Lifting the glass with both hands, I gingerly tip it towards my lips and take in a mouthful. Blah. Oh heavens, I do not want to drink this. I switched the liquid a bit, and as it mixes with my saliva, it seems nearly viscous, even. I want to retch. This is simply the worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. Atrocious. It bleeds the back of my throat with a sizzling, no, a burning sensation that has spread throughout the, my entire oral cavity. The ordeal lasts less than 10 seconds before I stop thinking and just swallow it. <laughs> Oh, come on. 
Goosebumps ripple across my skin and my eyes water. The beer drains down my esophagus, raising everything in its descent. <coughs> this is disgusting! Cyrus proceeds to drain half of his glass with a speed rivaling my mother's and an expression just as insensible. It amazes me that he can stomach it, and even more that he is willingly subjecting himself to it. Oh, this is pretty okay actually. Because I've had in a while. You're joking. That was worse than what I imagined piss to taste like. And the sensation. Everything about it, it's just... It's disgusting. Honestly, I find myself at a loss for words here. This beverage is just nasty. Finish that glass and we'll move along. I'm not finishing this. Do it. Do it. I mock him. Don't make that tone. Just finish your glass. Finish my glass? I let my hands drop with gravity, my cup crashing onto the table. This? This is what you want me to finish? Then Cyrus, who am I quickly losing respect for? I will drink this mug and in fact finish it if you do one thing for me in the future. Pardon? It isn't loud in here, Cyrus. I know that you heard me. Well then, what do you want me to do? Nothing now. The future is not now. Now is the present. The future is later, and I will tell you then. Sure you're not drunk, Winter. Hush. Fine. You'll have your way if you'll have mine, Winter Harrison. It is a deal you cannot break, sir. With that, I drain my glass in a matter of seconds using a technique I have observed over the years. When I set it down, there is naught but suds. Cyrus is impressed. I am appalled. Ah, this is so nasty. I squeeze my eyes shut and let the wave of warm and trembling feelings wash over me. Ugh. Mercy, Winter. That was something else. How are you feeling? I answer him with a stare and a shiver. Really? I shake my head. Honestly, now that the wretched experience of an instant is over, I realize I was overreacting. While certainly vile, it doesn't seem to be immediately damaging. It looks like it will take more than one beer to impair my judgment. Either that or the stuff's effects are simply delayed. I am fine. I think. Ah, you should be. Yes, I... don't really... I realize I might have spoken too soon as I suddenly feel a bit... as though I'm glowing. It's not a terrible feeling, and I seem to still be myself. All is in order. I don't feel much different at all. Give it some time. Didn't really drink too much anyway. There usually isn't a whole lot of alcohol in beer. Wonderful. Both of my theories are true. Okay, so what now? Now, we begin conversing. Cyrus discreetly points to the man at the corner. I'm going to talk to that man. You take the one at the counter. Try bringing up work and going on from there. Oh, of course, don't forget to keep where we're from and why we're here a secret. That kind of bar and chip doesn't shouldn't be even allowed to you kids. I'm going to talk to him alone? Well, yes, I think it would make him pretty uncomfortable to have both of us getting up on him. Oh, 
<sighs> I don't know about this. Don't worry, the bartender's right there. And I'm not far either. Nothing will happen to you. It's not that. I'm just not very good at talking to people. You're doing fine with me. You're my superior. Just go over there and give it a try. Fine. I get out of my seat and immediately yank at the table's edge as the floor shifts. Oh no. My knees quiver with fear and I firmly plant my feet, my heart thumping like I'm about to die. Gracious, what was that? Did something happen? Have we failed? <laughs> Calm down, you're just a bit tipsy. <sighs> Shut up. I pause. Tipsy. Oh, buzzed. Right, I'm just... Uh, crap. Just get over there. I surprise myself, briskly taking strides to the counter. I find the act curiously challenging and amusing. Each step I consider rather silly in its shakiness, and I begin wondering about how people learn to walk at all. That's not how my thoughts usually go, I think. I can't quite remember what I usually think about right now. I'm not drunk. I have an idea of what that is from looking, and this is not it. Ah, right. I am tipsy. Goodness, I'm unbalanced. I start slowing near the stools, and suddenly break out in a cold sweat. I'm not good with people, so what am I doing about to talk to a man? While I am considering this, the order to stop is not processed physically. I sit right down next to the gentleman as if it's the most natural thing in the world, and we're the oldest of pals. Strong ties, bonds formed from years of manual labor at the piers. I wonder how much alcohol I actually drank. Enough of this. Engage the man by his eyes. Yes. Like that. Like in the books. Hmm. Lean forward and get a closer look, Winter Harrison. Huh. Well, it's an East Garfy. Almost in an adorable way. His cheeks and chin are dashed all over to his stubble, and his eyes are soft and caring. He vaguely reminds me of a father I knew that was not mine. The classmates. I open my mouth and mentally say hello. But the order is not again, not actually processed. So I just hang my jaw and stare. He notices. Hello there, miss. Uh, hello. That's all I can do to say this. I failed to keep his attention and his eyes returned to the television above the bar. Television. That's right. They had that here. It seems to be a sports channel that he's watching, not that I know which. I only know it is a sport as there is a ball, there are people, and both are on the field. Ah, uh, it seems to involve only sculpted men. A particularly intimate sport. Wait, I'm overthinking it. Though I do believe that most sports have a peculiar and exciting kind of subtext. This one, I think, I could particularly like to watch. You're a little young to be in here, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm 14. I should not be here. I... I'm here with my dad. Uncle. My dad would never bring me here. My dunk, my, uh, my uncle is here and brought me here while he's on break. Right, mention work. Hmm, where is he? I point to Cyrus, who's now talking amiably with the other man in the corner. Goodness, such fast friends. He is the younger, ornery looking person. The old man chuckles, and I smile as though I've made a joke. Interesting word choice, girl. I read books. Huh, not so. It is so. Pretty much so. I read a lot. Hmm. 
is he celebrating the good news? Uh, maybe? Was there some news? Uh... Do you mean the minimum wage increase, sir? Yes, great news, isn't it? He grins. I'm Miriam. It is. I'm glad. You're working your... This, um, yes, it is work that I'm doing. Granted, unpaid, I am learning. Yes, I just started a little while ago. Hmm, I see. Well, welcome to the workforce, young miss. Haven't you gotten your first paycheck yet? No, not yet. And my name is Winter. That should have been two sentences. Nice to meet you, Winter. I'm David. I stopped speaking. I don't know why. It's almost as though anything I say won't make any sense, so I shut up. He does not speak either. The quietness is getting to me. Isn't there something I can say? Anything? What can I say? No, I'm lost. This is a terrible feeling. Like I'm drowning in air. Think, think. There must be something. What? You okay? Huh? Oh no, I'm panicking. He could tell. That's bad. This is because of the alcohol. It must be the alcohol. I'm... Uh... Yeah. Speak! So do... What do you do? Like for your work? Uh, my bad. Like for your work, I mean. Eh, you know, help out of the work, fit down into the mines, fit auto parts. That is amazing. <laughs> amazing. No, oh, no. When you get older, you'll have to run multiple jobs, too. Just about the only way to survive these days. How about you? What do you do? Oh crap, what do I do? Uh, why didn't I think of something for stupid, stupid, stupid? I shut my eyes for a second and give a quick shake of my head. Uh, um, uh, what would I do? Well, I guess I could technically be considered a, uh... I'm... A consoler. A counselor? Yes. Please let that be an acceptable job. Hmm, doesn't really seem like something that suit you. Hmm, no offense or anything. I didn't really choose it. He gives me a somber nod of recognition. Yeah, you gotta take what you're given. Yes. I suddenly feel miserable. Decide to lean on the counter. I rest my head, letting the fluff of my hair and sleeves serve as a pillow, and I look away from David. That's right. I didn't really choose it. I didn't really choose anything. As decisions came around, I just sat on my hands thinking. I don't know. Thinking that something would come to me. In a sense, I suppose that something did, but it was in an unusual way. Everyone else knew what they wanted to do after secondary school, and I was stuck on the path of a freeder. A freeder. A step away from a leech. Ugh. I couldn't pick a specialty school. I didn't know what I wanted. School Mediatorium, huh? What is a school? Why had I never heard of it, yet somehow my parents weren't surprised by the name? Why was I chosen? What's more, how? I never applied to this thing. Why did I even accept the go? I guess I was just happy that something had been found for me. And the system always knows best. I mean, it's not as though I dislike it. I spent the classwork and homework more than bearable, and my first shattering went okay enough. But, is this what I am? Is this what I'm meant to do? Ah, oh, this is stupid. What am I thinking? The oligarchy is infallible. They never make mistakes. 
therefore this must be what's right for me. Even if I think about it, it's totally weird. Cackle. It's my issue. It's better than what would have happened when I start caring so much about my direction. Wait, what am I thinking? I'm supposed to care about that. Still, why should I? How should I know the way to forge my life's path when I'm just 14? I don't even know what I'll be in like 8 years. I shouldn't have to care about this now. No, this is really messed up. I'm so messed up. Hey, hey, don't get like that. I'm sorry I brought it up. Can I get you something to drink? I turned back to glance at David. My nose tip brushing against cloth and something tingle across my face. Seeing him, I remember again. I'm in another world. As if I didn't have enough worries back home. Now I have a whole new world to worry about here. Another world which I had never heard of, but I'm supposed to believe is real? Just because things are here right in front of my eyes? So much strange stuff has happened to me that maybe I could just be dreaming. Is this man even real? Is he really there? Maybe he isn't. I read that there are illusions. But I prefer an illusion. But I prefer this to be a dream, maybe some sort of virtual reality. This whole idea is so ridiculous. What's worst of all, I find myself rather on the fence about his offer for a second drink. It would not be bad, actually, to forget who I am for a little while. Perhaps longer. It would be natural. No, it... it will also be dangerous. I force the darker notions aside, study the course. I draw my head back into the nest of my arms, hair curling over fingers. And I bring myself up, countenance solemn. Mm, no, I think I've had enough. Suit yourself. I will. I like it, David. Alright, what's next again? I need to figure out the root of the problem. It usually has something to do with the troubles of the people, right? I'll just be forward then. Has anything been troubling you lately? Uh, nothing more than usual, I suppose. I'm just here to commemorate the occasion. That way track takes a major load off. Though it's really too bad that we're still under Gabriel's boot. You know, I bet that they let the bill pass just to avoid revolt. They don't give a shit about us. Capri, uh... It's not this country, is it? Was it that? Ah, uh, the mother country, correct? I think that Brighton shouldn't be a, um... A colony of theirs anymore. It was labeled as independent in the dossier. I need to know more. How might I ask properly? Um, ah! What about the, uh, president? He seems to be working for us. He does, right? You know, it doesn't matter. He's just a figurehead. He can't do anything out without Gabriel's approval. He can't even raise a military to defend against Ferdia without them kicking up a fuss. Hell, it took six months before they let him train a single soldier. I'll give him some credit, though. They quit crying about it and been funding us rightly ever since. Riley realized that if Ferdia took us over, then they'd lose their workhorse. Um, Ferdia is... a third country, sharing a border with Brighton. What was it I read about them last night? Don't we have a truth to them or something? It has been around for a while. Yeah, but it's hardly there. Freddy has never been too afraid to stir up a war to over some real estate, or over some insult to their forefathers, whatever excuse. Not sure that them is just a piece of paper. If they wanted to, they'd take us down in a heartbeat. But they would have, at least, to we got an army to secure the border. Never know, though. 
Wow, this guy talks a lot. It's wonderful. I only have to say a word. Or at least I would if he didn't seem to want me to respond now. I put on a bit of an angry expression for a second, but then reconsider. Maybe a sad expression would be better? What's my character anyway? Am I being myself here? Wait, 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 no. None of that matters. Just answer. Ah, oh, that's terrible. Okay, I need another question. Maybe I should let some of my ignorance show. Why is it like this anyway? You don't know? Oh, I'm not surprised. They practically skip over that in schools. Give it a paragraph, maybe. Sure, they'll tell you Brighton used to be a Gabrian colony. That we gained our independence 120 years ago. They just never mentioned the cost of that freedom. Economic sanctions? Crazy ones. I mean, they weren't always crazy. Back then, minimum wage could feed you in more. The sanctions haven't changed though. I haven't adjusted with the dollar's value and cost of living. We screwed up. Got lulled into this false sense of liberty. Got so caught up in the things we could do, we forgot that what we can't. Thanks to inflation, these sanctions are making us so poor that they're killing us. I mean, literally killing us. Not a great thing to bring up when there's something to celebrate, but I don't even think they're trying just how many have died trying to live. I know I've definitely lost count. Then, is this the root? I mean, it sure does suck that these people are poor, really. Though honestly, if they've been this way for so long, they should be used to it. What is poor exactly? The television was harping on it earlier, David was harping on it just now. So I figure it must be important, but, you know, it's not since Stephen considered this seriously. I don't understand any of this. You have a session over the economy, the excitement over higher wages. None of it makes sense. Poor is not having enough for a snack. Money is a trivial thing. Another thing is that it's not even a major society of the world. That being the case, how come we're dealing with it all at all? And Cyrus. Cyrus, what is he thinking dragging me here? He probably only want a drink. What can I learn about the whole world just from one person? Not much. Ah, this is stupid, stupid. Ah, must be something else. If it's so terrible here, I wonder how it is in Cabria. Ah, complete luxury. They live like kings. Even their bums live better than us. Whoa, this, that is filthy. Filthy thing to say. It's a damn miracle any of them work at all. With how much they get for free. They get fired? The state takes care of it. They're hurt? The state covers it. My job to start with? The state. The state will go to the goddamn moons for its precious Cabrians. Can you believe it? People are starving here. It's that kind of fucking bullshit that... I went and raised my shoulders a little. Oh. Sorry. It, it's okay. I don't really take it any offense to swear words or rude language, but my dad was never terribly fond of them, and I've grown unused to their right. The harsher ones, anyway. It's a bit shocking to hear one in that tone. I decided to look back at the television, feeling embarrassed on David's behalf for reasons beyond my immediate comprehension. Well, we've got something new in the codex, so let's take a look at that. If you want to read all that, feel free to gather in the lore. And there's the same sport for all four seconds before cutting out. When the picture returns, a twisty and intricate trust, a duck flying over a sword and pickaxe, looks like, appears on the screen, set against a noble blue. Could this be a team logo? And adjust to audience from the coach and the captain? Oh, I wanna see. I lean back a few free from the counter until I'm supporting myself only slightly with my fingers and mostly with the stool's two hind legs. Hmm. 
Honestly, the warmth of the beer has not completely dissipated. David, what is that? Holy. George, turn it up. The person who is wiping glasses behind the counter raises his eyebrows slightly, then reaches listlessly for the remote. When it is in his hands, he turns, gives the television a tired glance. The crest on the screen wakes his eyes immediately, and he is soon mashing the volume up. I hear David shifting in my right, and it sounds as though he is turning in the direction of Cyrus and the other man. Clark, get over here! Oh, so that is the man's name. Clark. Clark and Cyrus look at David strangely, and strangely look at the one another, and then they begin rushing over. I find their antics confusing and unwarranted. What is the big deal over this? In a few moments, the whole gaggle of men surrounds the television. Even the waiter has stopped cleaning tables to watch. I don't know that sports are popular and all, but this is a little bit much, isn't it? This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Please pay close attention to the following message. Oh. The message will begin in 40 seconds. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Please pay close attention to the following message. The message will begin in 30 seconds. Goodness. This is it, isn't it? It. The thing. The problem. Oh no no, I'm not ready for this. Cleaning up garbage is car eh cleaning up garbage is one thing, but this is completely another thing, and I don't even know what exactly. I search Cyrus's eyes for something to comfort my spirits, but I find nothing and do not know why I bought it at all. His face is indiscernible as ever, aside from the serious brow and flip, of course. The message will begin in ten seconds. Crap. The message will now play. The crest vanishes, revealing a man in a suit at a desk, a dapper brown suit, and a large brown desk. I imagine he must be important, as the crest from before is quite brazenly carved into wood of this furniture. As for the man himself, he looks older than Cyrus, which is ancient at worst and age 60 at least. He looks very tired. His face is worn, and his expression does nothing for the mood. He does not have some fake looking hair though. That's pretty funny. I almost have a small chuckle, but given the severe expressions of my company, I decide it would be best to stifle it. Brighton. Brighton, we have endured. As a people, as a country, as a workforce. We have endured these past 120 years. Surely, surely, you are all very, very tired. I, my people, my friends, am very, very tired. The words sobering meant little to me before this, but I completely understand it at this moment. The way this man carries himself, speech, as there are voice of all combined to chill the warmth from my head. I set my stool back down and have an actual seat, looking up at the monitor with certain intensity. The man has me engaged. I'm tired of the media portraying a common man the fool, an ignorant sort all too glad to do the deeds of his brothers. Tired of these foreign companies providing us work and wages that we'll celebrate for only pennies more. Tired of hearing my people say in passing and in normalcy, no, I do not know if we will eat today, perhaps tomorrow. Brighton, I am tired of our masters. I am so, so tired. People of Brighton, we have grown so used to freedom we've forgotten that we are not free. This chair and this desk. The stage of an office on which I play my part is evidence of that. I offer a serious and composed look at Cyrus. If I am understanding correctly, 
I can't say I'm one for understanding much of anything on this world. It seems that this leader here is not as much of a leader as he might like. Which frankly, I don't quite get. The way leadership works back home, at least on a large scale, is that several especially intelligent and reasonable people rule over all of us. The idea of power being not enough, or being feigned, seems complicated to me. Like, what's the point? Why the show? I'd like to ask Cyrus about it, but he isn't returning my gaze. Instead remains focused on the television. I suppose I'll just have to keep listening. But I am no, not here to tell you the troubles of our state. I am not here to tell you the glory of our fathers. I am here to confirm the quiet whispers through the alleys and the worried murmurs of Gabrielle elite. Pardon? Consider this a threat. People of Gabria, you have four hours to comply with my demands, or a nuclear weapon will be launched at your country. That can't be good. Winter, come over here for a minute. I rise and step over to my mentor, feeling surprisingly clear-headed and befuddled all at once. He takes me from the counter, leaving the three gentlemen to discuss whatever it is exactly that the man on television just brought up. Nuclear weapon? The hell's that? What does Barnaby think he's doing? Can't believe he really did it. What kind of place does he think this is? Sir, could you please break down what just happened? I'm kind of lost here. Winter. Ah. I know we've only just arrived, but did you look at the files you were given at all? I did. Have you been paying any attention to anything out here? I, I have. You have? You have? Then explain who that man is. Explain anything. Uh, uh, don't put me on the spot like that. The leader of Brighton, sir. President Barnaby. He's angry about Gabri- I'm not an idiot. Gracious, why can I articulate or explain it any better? I just wanted to clarify some things, because I'm shadowing you. Sorry. I reacted out of impulse. I forget how unprepared life in our world can leave us for these things. I, um... His tone shook me up quite a bit. I'm shivering a little. I was going to lie and say, I understand. I'm having a lot of trouble speaking right now. I want to go home. Winter, you may not have realized the severity of the situation. This isn't going to be the community service like your first assignment. I know that. Hey, I straight Harrison. Allow me to be frank. Brace yourself, because there may be a lot of dying happening soon. Dying? But, but... I'm shocked, honestly. I figured those rumors I heard from Clark were only that. All the, all the death? I just thought... As far as we knew, this world hadn't even developed nuclear weapons yet. What did I think? You said a weapon. Am I daft? Though with their strides in utilizing nuclear fusion for electricity, I suppose it was only a matter of time. People are going to die? I, I don't... It's people dying. Just slow it down for a second. I suppose that's what's come to with our job. Not everything can be in the dossiers, right? We smooth out the creases and bring chaos to order. Slow it down. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Though sudden wars really are rare. War? My mind starts to tumble, and my heart tries to explode from my chest. I definitely can't handle this. War isn't something I'm supposed to take care of. Shut up! Don't excite the locals. I cover my mouth and raise my shoulders. 
Of course they're looking for a war. Can't believe people dying is just a commonality. Do you even think properly? Am I finding it incredibly hard to do anything properly right now? Shaking, I turn to see the people at the counter. They thankfully are still engrossed in the president's speech. I look back at Cyrus and speak softly through my fingers. Shouldn't I go home? Yeah. Oh. This is supposed to be something like diplomacy. It goes to show you how important it is to get a look at the situation yourself. Anyway, if what I heard was right, we don't have the time to get you out of here without causing a scene. As you should know, interplanar shifts take longer prepared than just moving from place to place. But I'll protect you no matter what happens in winter. And you know how to escape it really must. Yes. I don't know if I won't do that anymore, though. He's talking about maybe dying. Of course, we don't have a lot of time in general. It's demands I couldn't care less about. This deadline. Four hours. Consider this a powerful lesson come with me. You proceed to exit the bar without saying goodbye. It seems that it's time to get to work. It's too bad that I'm terrified. We take the streets at a quick pace. Size lean to wherever. I find it difficult to keep well with him though. And in more ways than one, my head is still swinging with the mention of war. What level is the war do you think? You mean what level do I think it'll be? It hasn't happened. With any luck, it won't. Luck? Um... I'm thinking this could be something like 4 on the scale. 4? 4? Uh... Oh gracious, 4 is only 1 away from 5 and 2 from 6, which is terrible. 6 is very, very terrible. The worst. Even 4 though, a war without rules? Uh, that must be particularly gross. It's a very disturbing prospect, so it's disturbing that I grab my hair and almost shut my eyes. What exactly is this? What will happen? Test. What do you think? <laughs> is it really the time for tests? Pretty appreciative sure that I'm even doing this work, Winter. He seems so much more angry than before. How irksome. What do I think? What it could be? Well, uh, first of all, Gabriel will respond to Brian's threat. Possibly. Possibly? Why wouldn't they? I'll answer that for you. Because it might work in their favor to ignore it. I uh, don't get it. Just think, Winter. Okay, just think. Wonder to advise you. Ah! Well, maybe they just don't care at all about Brighton, and they'll use this tantrum as an excuse to destroy them. That's... Nonsensical, I know. Keep pointing out how like I'm a fish attempting to walk. That's right, Winter. You're right about why they won't respond. What? How absurd. Isn't Gabriel a leech on Brian's back? They need Brian, so why would they want to destroy it? Well, they won't exactly destroy Brian. What they do would do is invade and take away what little freedom and independence this country still clings to. Then they would be able to take advantage of the citizens in ways unprecedented. What a disgusting thought. I can hardly even imagine it. Alright, there is another question. Why does Brian think he can take on Gabriel? Damn it, Cyrus! How should I know? The same way you knew the first answer. I was bullshitting. Language? Sorry, sir. Thinking about recent events might help. 
goodness, is he trying to get me to think in the place of murderers? Those are boots I would not like to fill. I guess that I had to, though. He mentioned recent events. I can't think that the minimum wage increase was emboldened in this country enough to believe they could stand against an obviously superior nation. Especially with how unimpressed the president seemed to be about it. Even David wasn't terribly excited. Oh, David! What was it that David mentioned? Their new army. The person I spoke with, his name was David. He said that Brian had gotten a military recently to defend against the border country, Feridia. He said it was because Feridia is dangerous and ignores treaties. But isn't it far more likely that the army would actually create it to engage with Gabria? With an actual military, you know, it seems to be a new kind of weapon, at least judging from how the locals reacted, and that would explain their confidence. I think. See, Winter? You are cut off for this. <laughs> Wait, don't reference things I remember to myself before we came here. Creep. Then you understand the situation. Yes, but I'm curious. Isn't this more like a level 5 war? As Brian and Gabriel are technically separate, I can't call what might happen a civil war. Then it's a technicality. Just a technicality. I had figured Brian and Gabriel were still very close. Well, look at you, you're all calm. I frown with indignation. I'm not at all calm that this is essentially a level 5 war. Well, you look it. I did not let up with my frown. Well, that isn't all there is. Now, this might proceed largely has to do with what level I would give this potential war. Sorry stops, they stop and turn. We're now in front of a fountain. It took me the entire time till now to realize that the city streets are deserted. The doorways are even clear of those ragged children who would ask us for pennies. Could be that everyone is listening to address. Before I can drift off on this thought, Cyrus looks down to me. A nuclear weapon is one that can kill a lot of people and destroy a lot of things almost instantly. Um, excuse me? Honestly, Winter, what did you think I'd meant earlier when I said a lot of dying could be expected? I won't go into the details, but it's not something you would have been taught about yet. I've dealt with it before, though. You're lucky. I'm not lucky at all. Not even the little slightest. What kind of thing is that? Is it magic? This isn't a magical world, Winter. Thank the Harabs who won't be going to those just yet. They're less fun than they sound. I should not be going to worlds of wars either. <laughs> Point. You can check your codex for information about what we'll be dealing with, if you like. I need to contact support and update them anyway. So at least it will give you something to do while you wait. What is it called exactly? Just nuclear weapon? Seems rather broad. Like spear weapon or fruit drink? I believe that's a fusion bomb. While Barnaby didn't specify, the rumor I heard supports it. Also it makes sense, considering the reactors. Reactors? You've got? We saw them when we were first arrived. This country utilizes fusion reactors for power. Alright, the living and shadowy giants that stand at distant steppies. Oops, the distant steps. I remember not wanting to remember them. They were disconcerting. Like many other things here, they looked a mess. And unlike many other things here, they vibrated. I thought they were going to violently break apart. Anyway, fusion bombs should be under weapons, obviously. It's technically not pure fusion. But most worlds can only do so much. Not pure? Well, it's a limited reaction jump started by fission. True fusion bombs are rather like man-made stars. 
Stars are beautiful. Not the word I'd use for those. Just keep the distinction in mind and read that fusion bomb entry. Right, right, understood. I mumble this as Cyrus turns from me and begins raising his mouth. He suddenly pauses though and addresses me again. Oh, and Winter, while you're at it, check out the appropriate entries pertaining to this world. Always mind your codex, it could save lives. Remember to keep tabs on it. Understood, sir. I look at my own wrist. Both of our supporting bracelets, which look very similar to stylish and thin digital watches. We have to regularly hide them from view. It's where I advise that they are considered suspicious looking things, usually. Hey, Cyrus. You guys probably know that there's trouble at this world. Yes, more trouble. Cut the cutie crap. This isn't the time. I'm actually. Oh, he's actually what exactly? I look at him. He notices that I'm listening, shifts a little, and I walks out of my range of hearing. That is worrisome. I look back at my wrist device, my ICD. Interplane air communication device. A name which does not actually cover all that it does, it also carries a database and tells time and probably a thousand other things as it is fancy. Honestly, if there's anything magical I have encountered so far as a student mediator, it is most indefinitely the ICD. Science magic or some such. It basically does everything. It's how we get to other worlds and teleport around them. And it can open up a tiny pocket dimension for holding things. An inventory, it's called. I think it is pretty cool. It came up from my own world. I would never have imagined. Right now I need to access the codex. I focus the thought, open the codex, and the device recognizes the command, as is linked with my mind, which is awesome. A tiny holographic screen emits from the device in a rather inconspicuous fashion, yet still in an acceptably readable size. I began to navigate the database searching for, well, let's see, Sewell, Triton, Debria, and Feridia too, I suppose. I think I'll leave Fusion Bomb for last. Alright, as usual, you can pause on this and read it if you want to. It's quite a long list, so I'll just scroll down. And if you want to stop and pause to read this one, feel free to do so. And I have run out of time. But if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment on what your favorite part of it this is. And if you would like to watch some more, please check the playlist down below. If you want to watch other vision novels, please check my channel down below. Anyways, thank you and take care.